you notice, I'm very James Bond tonight, jacket. We're going highbrowing. I'm very excited about tonight's video. We have renowned violinist Kim Kennedy with us. She's played concertos on Stradivarius. She's played in halls all over the world. And I'm just so excited that she's on our show that I thought, you know, maybe I should like, well, swag, right? So anyways, enough of me, right? Well, for now. Hi, Kim. Hey, Dee, you're so funny. <laughs> And I'm here not very highbrow, am I? I do have the violin. <laughs> um, honestly, <laughs> kind of highbrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's your casual? Wow. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is work casual, yes. If I were in rehearsal, this is what I would wear. Wow. So is it like, like, like you just, your casual is quite lovely. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. You always, Thank you. You carry yourself. Well, I always think you look great. You don't need a jacket to look great, but if you want another excuse to wear a jacket, come downtown to Orchestra Hall and watch the DSO. It's a date. I'll get you a ticket. <laughs> really? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, good tickets. Like I, I can get. I, I can mean, get. I can get you the tickets that I can get for myself. But yeah, pretty good tickets. Oh, I see a video coming, guys. <laughs> yes, score. And make sure you come this year because it is the centennial anniversary of Orchestra Hall's existence. We just performed a concert last week that was the exact concert that was played 100 years ago. <laughs> really? It, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, had, it, it was uh, it was an amazing concert too. It was so it was the first the, the concert that opened our season this year. Cool. So how did how is it like to play in the big halls and the big league now? It's it's wonderful. I feel like it's such a blessing to to do what I do day in and day out to play beautiful music in incredible acoustics. Well, ex excuse me, but you also play on. The Stradivarius, if the Stradivarius that he learned how to make. I'll Strat help you with that. <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah. This is uh, a brother's Amati instrument. Nikolai Amati is the famous Amati. There are three generations. He's the, the youngest of the three. He's the famous Amati who taught Stradivarius and Guanarius how to make their instruments. Wow. This violin was made in 1626. Can't touch it. No. <laughs> you may not. No, you may not. You can look very closely from there. Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> well, it has a story. So okay. if I take the back off, I don't know if the, the camera can see, but you see all of these marks? Yeah, cool. There are about 30 cracks in this violin. <laughs> and it still plays? It still plays. It was restored wonderfully, but the story is, in Russia, it was run over by a stagecoach. It fell off the top of a stagecoach, fell out of the case, and the wheel ran over it. No, I'm just in shock that it's like, can you, I was just like, I think I just went to a time tunnel, because I was like there, and I was just like, can you I imagine know. just seeing the stagecoach going over it? And, and that was probably like in the early 1800s that that happened. 200 years before that was when the violin was made. So the, the history of, of where this was. So the, um, I was mentioning that it was Brothers Amati. It was in that shop, but Nikolai Amati was who probably um, had his hands on it more than anyone else in the shop. But the father, Nicolo Amati, he died of the plague in 1630. So just after this was oh. made, Okay, well, there's a turn in the script. <laughs> this violin survived the plague. <laughs> and, yeah. And the stagecoach. <laughs> it's a lie. It, it has, has a history. Had a history, yeah. So, is it like a, and I don't mean to be cavalier with the statement at all, I mean to be honest, do you feel like a synergy with it when you play? It's, it's very interesting to, to play on an instrument like this. You know, I, like you mentioned, I played on a Strat I have played on a Stradivarius. I've played on three, actually. 
And most recently I performed on one of the Henry Ford violins. It was uh, the um, 1703 Stradivarius and I, I performed the Barber Violin Concerto at Orchestra Hall last spring. Playing on a Stradivarius is, you, you would imagine that it would have this out of this world experience. Yeah, I'm thinking like it would take you to another place. And it does, it definitely does, and it taught me how to be a better violinist. But I really? have a better connection with this violin than I did with that violin. It, it just sings differently for me. That one I had to play in a, in a in kind of a tighter place. I don't know if anybody knows what it means to be closer, engaged in the bridge. I had to play that way all the time. With this violin, I can just let it breathe and let it sing, and it does, and it's a beautiful sound. I've had this violin since May, and it actually doesn't belong to me yet. I'm looking for a buyer. <laughs> Hello? You heard it, people. Feel free to email away. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kim, how can I help you? Well, I'm under a lot of lights. I have to dress up quite a bit, and as much practice as I've gotten on this thing, I haven't quite gotten it mastered about how to do this thing. Ah, the stage makeup in the spotlight now. Nah, this takes me back to Hollywood days. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's understandable. So what we'll do today is come up with your face painting for your performances. Great. I can't wait for you to teach me how to do this the right way. I want to look elegant, but I want to look enough for my audience. I need to understand what's enough so that, you know, what I look like in the mirror three feet away is different from people sitting out in the seats with me under those lights. What I'll do is I'll come up with something that's kind of easy for you to do, but definitely playing to the audience and the camera. We are on camera, actually. We do webcasts. We are the first orchestra in America to have a webcast. Before we do it, can you just give me like one note? Come on, just come on, give us one. Just one? Only one? How about I give you a couple? Well, everyone, guess what? We have a <laughs> bit of a surprise for you at the end. I'll give a few more than three notes at the end. We kind of staged this one up for you guys. <laughs> I don't think we fooled them. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so here we go. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a primer on her. And these are really easy to do. You just want to use a sponge and go over the face. This is something very important, especially for people in theater or film, because under such hot lights, as you probably know, <laughs> but it'll keep it from sweating off or soaking up into the pore. It will hold on your face. So you don't even have to worry about touching up in between shots or numbers. And then we're now we're going to go in and do foundation work. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using two different colors on her. What, this is more for on stage. Because what I want to do is I want this part of your face to really be a lot more open and brighter when, when the camera sees it. Especially with you playing the violin, you're down like this. I need this part of your face to really pop out. So, hey, I know it sounds like we're getting way outside. It happens to the bottom of my face. Yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna blend the two together uh, okay. and, and show you how it works. First, we're gonna go in with our light one. And we're going just straight around the nose and high points. What I wanna do now is a little corrective around the eyes. Now she goes into the more blue reddish tones. So what I want to do is I'm going to go in here with green, with veiling. And I'm going to put it just inside, making it V. I have green on my face. You have green on your face, yes. So now I'm going to bring that in with a brush and fill in underneath. 
Then we're going to go back in now with our light color and just pop it lightly over it. Don't go crazy and try to just completely wipe it all out. You want to be very sheer with it. The green will neutralize the red and the blues. You can see now her eye is starting to just pop out. Okay, and now we're going to set that with just a little bit of setting powder. Because we don't want it to be moved around. We go in with our other color. Now we're going to go in with our little bit darker. And going into the higher area. Going around what we've done. And remember always, when doing the neck, you want to go up. And we're going to lightly use our green here for some corrective. Do you know what that's from? No, I do not. It is from Flying the Violin. It's where I hold the generous. Okay, people, so here's a problem that she has with the work. There's a lot of practicing done. So what we're going to do there is to neutralize that red out when they're green, using my fingers, I'm just tapping it in there. People used to say I had a hickey. Yeah, well, then we think <laughs> in high school you probably got some questions. Yeah. And then we're just going in with the dark red over it. I was always so happy when I'd go somewhere and I'd see someone with the same thing. I'd be like, oh, you understand. <laughs> okay, I'm going underneath. And this is where you can use those, the blenders, the sponge blenders, and blend here if you want. Or you can go into a, um, the classic powdery and blending brush at the same time. I like to go in here too, just a little bit of our green. And now going light. in with the light, keeping it popping. I think I need a lot of green, don't I? <laughs> it brings out your eyes. <laughs> My brown eyes. <laughs> this is a translucent powder. Don't be afraid of it, it looks like it's as white as white can be. You think, I don't want to put that on my face. It's like, no, it's translucent. Once it's, you just powder it in, it absorbs right into what we've done. Okay, now we're going to go into her eyes. What I want to give her is a more shimmer, but I don't want to go real high, high reflective because of the lights. I don't want there to be too much, like this is a Broadway production, but I definitely want the shimmer to make it pop. First of all, I'm going to go in with my crease line. And I think I'm going to go into Holiday Gold. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a crease brush, blow it up, give it a good little tap, because mixers and go up, and just go in there and fill that all in. The whole crease line with your crease brush. Very simple. Don't be afraid of it. And the crease brush, if you notice, is pointed. So those outer brushes soften all of this. And you just repeat the performance over here. Okay, now we're gonna go in with some very light. And we're gonna hit the center. Just take a little bit of lightness and fill it up above. Now I'm going to go with a softer gold. Now going in with a point brush. We're going to take some soft pinks with strong reflection and we're going to go up and in this eye. Remember we're setting stage. Now we're mixing our gold and our pink together. Then I want to go back in with my gold. 
can go just really a lot stronger. We can have V here in the end. And now we're going to go in with our eyeliner. And this can always be tricky. A lot of makeup artists like to do the eyes first and do the foundation. I know, I think the merging, even with blenders, is still a problem, so I separate mine. Okay, just have a look there. We'll close, please. And I'm going to go in there. And remember, we're doing for stage, so we're going to go a little bit stronger. But you still don't want to look overdone. I'm come over here. Same thing. Starting much higher. Just think of a 45 degree angle. Okay, so then you want to go in with fine brush and you want to go from the outside inward with your first stroke. That's all you're doing here now is smoothing out the liner. So you want to blend that in and make sure you get down to the last line. Okay, so now after you do that, you're going to go ahead and then search your upstroke. For your wings. And just smudge it around. Remember it seems strong, but we are doing this for theater. Okay, so now I want you to open your eye. And I'm just taking my brush and I'm just kind of lightly filling in the liner there. Just just lightly. So what you want to do now is the underneath. What I recommend, so we don't go too dramatic or too over the top, is find the center of her retina, which is about right here. And so I don't want my eyeliner to go past there. So I'm going to lightly take some liner and go in there and connect. Doing the same thing over here, looking straight at me, and I know that there's my there's my line. So I can just put some eyeliner on. Going back with my brush, now this one you're again you're gonna go inward because you don't want to overpaint. And what I'm gonna do is like slightly move now forcing that liner to slowly move. This way I do not get overlined by putting the majority of it from the retina over. So again, that's why you're moving this. You connect the two and you're pushing the makeup into the tear duct. A nice faded line. Go back with our goal. We're going to go right in there. And we're going to slightly go underneath. Don't be afraid of reflection. Okay, so now I want to work on eyebrows. So what you're going to do is your angle pointed towards the nose. You're going to come right in here and you're going to make a straight up line. And I'm going to take my color now and I'm going over the top. And after the bend, you want to go ahead and bring it down just a little bit further and let the eyebrow fade out. Now I'm going to flip my brush and go underneath everything. You know, I have never done anything to my eyebrows except pluck them because they've always looked too thick to me. This is totally brand new. Well, you know, a strong eyebrow is really in this year. You're going to go in there and brush that down. What that does is it really softens the look. 
Okay, when you're doing someone else's lashes, their natural instinct is to want to hold their eye perfectly still. And they're gonna bleed, they're going to water up if you do that. So what I came up with this theory is put a dot on your hand. Okay? And I'm gonna soon tell her to follow the bouncing black ball. So look over here and follow it. Lower it, please. See, I can get right in here now. See, so wherever she is, I could be the opposite place without her getting watery eye. And it's keeping their eye moving. Now, before you do the bottom lash, you want to make sure that top lash is really good and dry, especially when you have a full lash like hers. Make sure you have plenty of mascara on. We all know the trick, dab. And what I like to do is, I call it sawing, zigzag. Just go back and forth, this movement, and comb it out. Okay, now I want to go into some contouring. What I'm using today is a contour palette. This has come out by Jabinash this season. I love it. I'm really happy with it. It has everything I need right here. From my cheeks, to my contouring, to my highlighter, run through eyes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my contour. Take your brush, your blush brush, and take your middle finger and thumb and squeeze it together. And you want to go right in here. And you're going to go up to the cheekbone and underneath to the chin. Basically, the angle that you're looking at is from here to here. So you don't really want to go past there. Or else you'll close her in. This is to open up the face. And now you're going to go in there and you want to use your setting powder. The reason you want to use setting powder at this point is because you want to kind of blend it, start blending it in. Blenders work, but it has to also be used with setting powder. Please keep that in mind. Okay, and now I want to do some cheek work on her. So I'm going to mix pink and a lighter pink. I'm going to go top by the ear down. What that's going to do is cause the brush to come off the face naturally. Find the cheekbone. So now we can go into the contour of the nose. I'm going to go into camel color. I am making a line on both sides of the nose bridge. And that line is going to come all the way down. And then I'm taking my brush from that line and just pushing it downward. That's all I'm doing. So now, we're going to do is go, we'll go back to our concealer brush, go in with the lighter makeup that we used on foundation here and here, and I'm going to just take the flat side of this brush and put the lighter color on. Just the flat side. Go right down the center of the face. Using your fingers just to do a light blending. Okay, so now we're left with her lips. Okay, matte lips are in the season. Everything's matte. But, not everything should be matte. Um, what I recommend doing before putting lipstick on is using an ointment. You just go over that lip with just a nice lip ointment. I personally like DCT, makes it easy, because with the new matte lips, we're not doing that much lip lining. We're doing actually colors of lips, making it more of a biologic lip. But I picked out two different shades. With your darker color, you're gonna go in there, you're gonna create your own lip liner. And at the bottom, and by using that ointment, it allows the lipstick just to glide. 
Now we're getting really full through the corners. Pushing it now into the center. So now we're going with our lighter color and we're going to just fill in the center. Is it, that was it. And now we're going back over our liner. Just for fun, we're going to go in with our point brush and just kind of lightly tap around here and there just to give that little shimmer when these lights hit her as it just did and I'm going over now with it over our contour lines and this is the look I would recommend if you go on stage you want to take a look sure <gasps> it looks great it looks really good. Thank you. Your brilliant new look for stage. I think you should definitely wear this look on stage. I think we found your new holiday face. And it looks elegant still. It doesn't, it's not overdone to me. I like it. Ladies and gentlemen, Kim Kennedy.